Let me know if people start popping on. Yeah. Can't talk to me there. It's so weird to see myself on another camera. There you go. People will comment as they show up. They have show up. <laughs> I see people. Hello. But then, what is a certain outcome? Lisa says hi. Hi, Lisa. I've been following you in Africa. I missed you in London, so I came to this place. I waited for your return from the interior. How do you know I returned? Because you can't die until you've served your purpose. And what's that? To fight the great demons of earth and sky until you are dead. I'm done with that. Better say you're done with breathing. You must come with me. Where? America. Huh. Ethan Chandler needs your help. God, that sounds good. And you expect me to come with you to America? I demand it. My name is Kaitne. Come with me and I'll tell you the story. To what? The New Mexico Territory. My home and his own. He was almost my son. You know you have a further destiny. Oh, that smells like a Christmas tree. Yet. Our son needs us. Where is your Babe. heart now, Sorry. Are you keeping up? Connor. Me. Not going to Okay. What you doing? What are you making? <laughs> All right. So today we're doing a home chef recipe. Sirloin steak with blue cheese compound butter with green beans and roasted fingerling potatoes. And it looks amazing. I'm drooling already. I love these because they have like a picture of what it's supposed to look like. For those of you who keep questioning why my presentation is so good, it's because I have a picture. <laughs> but then they give you like picture how to do the recipe and what it's supposed to look like on every step. It's amazing. If you haven't tried this, send me your email and I'll send you guys some free meals because it's totally worth it. Janelle says your head up here looks killer. <laughs> Thank you, Janelle. <laughs> what are we doing? So right now I am doing the first step. I should probably preheat the oven. Hold on a second. So I have to preheat the oven to 400 degrees. So I'm gonna let that kick on while I, oh my goodness, ruin everything. Okay, so the next bit is I have to chop up all of these fine, delicious ingredients here. And you always have your fruits and veggies on one cutting board and your meat on the other cutting board so you don't cross contaminate. Very smart. Um, so right now I am chopping rosemary, and it smells amazing, and kind of like a Christmas tree. Casey says a little bit. Usually cook steak at 450. Well, Casey, I'm following the recipe. Yes, he says hello, Yeshi. Yeah. Oh, hi, Yeshi. So this says to roughly chop the rosemary, so you don't have to dice it like super fine. So I'm just gonna like. Just a couple times. Backwards and forwards. Also, I probably have my body weight in prep bowls, which are, you can get them either individually at like Bed Bath & Beyond or Walmart or Amazon or literally anywhere. I got mine in like a huge, giant stack that like they all nest together. And I use them very frequently. Every single time I cook, I always put my ingredients in the prep bowls first, that way I get everything all organized. There we go. Okay. 
chocolate rosemary, so that goes in a bowl. And we wait. Next, trim and thinly slice the green onions. I love green onions. I actually save the bottoms after I cut them up and I put them in like a little shot glass and I fill it up with a little bit of water and I put it either up against a window or like out on the deck. I've got one right now and you can grow the bottoms. Hey babe, can you go grab the shot glass off the deck real quick? It's on the little table. I'll show you what it looks like. It's been out there for a couple days or so, so hopefully we'll have some green on it. But you can cut them off like right about here, like a couple inches from, oh sweet, oh wow. Those are really good. So you guys can see, I have a shot glass, and there's like... Tara says hook me up with three. <laughs> Lily was asking, where is it? Blue Apron? Um, I used to do Blue Apron for a little while, um, and I liked it, and I think it was a good introduction to the whole uh, food service box idea. Um, but I really like uh, Home Chef's selection better than Blue Apron. It has a lot more options. Um, like with Blue Apron, you can only get up to three meals a week, but here I can get one, two, three, four, five. They also have breakfast and dessert recipes, and they have stuff that's good for um, low carb or vegan or heart healthy. Like they have a bunch of different options. So right now I'm just slicing the green onions, and you generally, when you cook with green onions, they'll have you separate the green parts from the white parts at the bottom. Usually because the white parts are like a lot thicker and more starchy and the thin pieces up front are better for like garnishes or toppings. Nobody's commenting anything. That's perfectly fine. Stick that in my shot glass. Thanks, Vicky. As she says, you look like you're a lefty. So I'm actually, this is my right hand. I'm right-handed. Um, Florida's asking if you wash the veggies first. Yes. Some veggies you want to wash. I wash all the veggies. I put them back in the bags just to keep them together. But you just wash them in, like, cold water, rinse them. I leave them in the bag and just kind of, like, shake them together if they're too small to be brushed like green beans. These are really tiny, I can't exactly take a veggie brush to them, so I just rinse them in cold water. The potatoes I just run through by hand. If you have something like a big potato, um, you can take a veggie brush to it lightly or a carrot or something like that that's big enough to hold in your hand. But yes, always wash your produce first because especially if you get it from like the grocery store where other people have been touching it all day um, and you don't really know where they got it from. You want to make sure you get all the dirt and crap off. So, have the great tomatoes. Oh, okay, not potatoes yet. So, and I like that they pre portion all of the ingredients in like these little baggies and containers, so I never have to worry about measuring ever. So nice. And I can save the recipe cards later. So if I ever like a recipe a lot, I can always make it again.
And you want to be careful with grape tomatoes because these are round, slippery little fuckers. And you can use like a small paring knife for this, but I'm really like the less dishes that I have to do, the better. So if I can do it with one knife, one pan, what have you, that's what it, that's what happens. <laughs> some really cool tips recently um, I just signed up for for those of you who didn't see my post a, about a week ago I signed up for Gordon Ramsay's cooking masterclass online and it is really cool it's definitely worth the buy um, it shows you a lot of really great tips and tricks and stuff on how to handle things handle food how to chop correctly so you get the most food out of your um, cuts and stuff um, and one of the biggest things was importance of being efficient with your knife cuts, especially when you're doing things like cutting garlic or spices. If you cut it too much, you can actually bruise it and then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do in your food. The flavor changes and the texture changes. So you want to be real smart. Don't worry about going too fast. Some things I can chop with my eyes closed. Some things, like with garlic, it's so small. I just take my time. Don't have to be Speedy Gonzalez with a knife. How you lose fingers. Oh, and ask, uh, she buys organic. Do they sell organic products? And know where we're sourced from. Absolutely. I don't know the specific location, Lauren, of where they get their ingredients, like what farms or what city or anything, but all of their ingredients are organic or pasture-raised, um, free-range, grass-fed, like all of that good stuff. Um, so I really appreciate that they take a lot of time to get. Uh, if they have stuff that's in season, they'll make a point to advertise like in uh, recipes that use the food that's in season. So like uh, strawberries are in season in the summer, so they'll do a lot of like strawberry tart desserts or st stuff with strawberries for breakfast or like really make use of the produce that's actually in season so you're not getting a lot of off-season stuff. Okay, have the fingerling potatoes. That's the easiest part. Oh, and that is my oven saying it is on. So how, and I like here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So you can see here where they chop all the different bits. They kind of show you how they chop it. Now, if you're a stickler for presentation like I am, then you follow the picture. But honestly, if they say cut it in half, you can pick your direction. It really doesn't matter. I like to take pictures of my food. So I try to, I kind of challenge myself whenever I do this. I try to see if I can get it to look exactly like the picture. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. So I'm just doing like a long ways slice this way. That way you get more surface area of potato instead of cutting it like this way where you just have two like chunks. This way you've got like these long little boats, little potato canoes. Trim the ends off the green beans. Okay. Lauren wants to know what's the price point per meal. Per meal? Mm -hmm. It's nine ninety five, so it's about ten bucks per serving. Um, you can get as little as one serving, or I haven't actually checked the max, but I think it's probably like five or six servings. It's like they do like a family size size, and you know you could probably go to the grocery store and make that stretch a lot further and spend less than ten bucks per person on a dinner, but honestly, compared to the late night delivery food binges and being too lazy to cook something healthy, we definitely spend a lot less money doing it this way, and I get to make a new recipe every single time. I don't think they've repeated a single recipe since, 
Some of them are really like high quality stuff like they use filet mignon. I am super impressed with their meat selection. Every single piece of meat that they deliver is super tender. It's not, you know, it hasn't turned. It doesn't turn during the week that we have it. So I could cook, you know, the fish on the very last day, which is, you know, usually something that you have to be careful of because the longer it stays in your fridge, the longer it, uh, the more risk that it's going to go bad. But I can keep the food in the fridge until the very last day of our rotation and it still comes out perfect. I'm really, really impressed with their meat selection. This is the part that takes forever, the peeling the beans, because you have to do them both ends one at a time. You could probably actually, you know what? We're gonna do this the lazy way. Where I'm pulling them up together and like flattening them all so they're kind of even on one side. Bam. Some things you can totally be lazy with, like that. Some things you should just do it exactly like the recipe says because otherwise if you try to do it, you don't know how and you mess it up. You could ruin the recipe or hurt yourself. Put some of yourself in the recipe. And I always like to chop stuff right next to the sink because you can have a trash can nearby. I have one over there, but for non-food items that I need to throw away. But if you can cook like with a cutting board on either side of the sink, then you can just toss those scraps like right in when you're done. Andrew Ramirez asked if you ever get any lower than the quality veggies. Um, sometimes, I think only once or twice. And that's usually not when it arrives. The veggies that I have that kind of go, that turn a little bit, are usually the ones that have been sitting in the fridge. Like, they're not that way when I get them, but sometimes if they sit in the fridge for a while, if it's something that's soft like a spinach or a, a soft herb like parsley or something like that, that it, the weight of the rest of the ingredients, they all come in like these big bags like this and all the ingredients are bagged together like that and let me see if I can pull this so you can see what it looks like and they get a big sticker with the name and their logo so you can put it all in your fridge and it's all just like together the this is all the produce stuff and then the meat they have separate so that you know exactly what is for what recipe and you don't have to guess it's really nice but yes, AJ, the short answer is no, I haven't gotten any like bad veggies or anything like that. Not off the bat. Okay, so the next bit says rinse the steaks, pat dry, and season both sides with salt and pepper. Now, I don't rinse meat. Sometimes I'll rinse like chicken breasts because they get really gooey, but you don't necessarily need to rinse the meat. You just want to make sure you pat it dry so you don't get all the blood and the goop and crap. Take off like all of your rings and bracelets and stuff. You don't want to get the meat juice in between your fingers. Nobody wants that. And definitely do this over the sink. Because it gets really messy. Bring it. And I just lay out a paper towel and put it right on top. Lay out the rest. And like when it comes out, you can feel it's like super tender. It's really soft, but it's not, it's firm in the center, but you can tell it doesn't have any um, like gray parts to it or anything like that. You can tell when meat starts to age, it goes like, it goes brown or like kind of gray colored. So you always want to make sure when you cook meat that it's as fresh as it can possibly be 
because that's going to give you the best cook and it's going to lower your risk of getting any kind of like bacteria or anything like that. Elizabeth says hello. So Zandra hey Cece. Hey, hey Dana. <laughs> Okay. Seasoning the meat is honestly my favorite part because I just got new salt and pepper and I'm always really excited to use new stuff when I get it. So I have a separate board for the meats. And usually what I do is I get a wet paper towel like this. Just like run it under, squeeze it out, and put it on your surface and then you put your cutting board right on top so it doesn't move, so that when you're cutting, nothing is scarier than cutting something and have your knife hitting the cutting board and the whole cutting board goes with you. It's the scariest thing ever, and it should never ever happen. So if you don't have a cutting board that has like little grippy feet or something underneath to keep it from sliding, you can wet a paper towel and put it under there and that works just as well. Also something I learned from Gordon Ramsay, super low tech. So salt and pepper, I just got um, a salt box, which is just this tiny little bamboo box with like a twisty lid, like that, twist on and off, it's got like a little magnetic thing here. This is awesome because it doesn't dry out the salt and it keeps it covered so that it doesn't, it's not exposed to any like dust or bugs or anything like that. Um, and I actually just got new salt, I'll show it to you in the container I put it in. Um, the box is long gone in the trash now, but these are Malden, M-A-L-D-O-N, sea salt flakes. And they're really, really, I'll see if I can get like a good up close shot. These things are amazing. I'm going to flip this around so you can see what I'm doing. So these, unlike normal table salt, these are really like thick, flaky chunks. Like it's a little flake, it's like flakier than kosher salt and a little, um, heavier than regular table salt. And the reason that I like this so much is because it gives you a lot of control on how much salt you're using. Um, with table salt, the grains are so fine and you have to worry about like what other chemicals they put in it. Um, with kosher salt, I used kosher salt religiously up until like a week ago when I found out about this stuff. Um, because it's like got thicker grains so that's more concentrated salt on certain areas it just changes the flavor makes it a little more flavorful and then i discovered these babies and these were so good um and then i got i had like one of those little pepper grinders that you get at the grocery store and i got these peppercorns on amazon for like six bucks something like that just like whole peppercorns and this beautiful thing make all the jokes you want now don't worry i'm expecting it but it's got like the little knob you can turn left and right to adjust whether how coarse or how fine you want it so if you want to do a uh, seasoning you want it on like on meats you want it on like a medium size um if you're just doing like over food season to taste and stuff like that you can do finer or coarser if you're doing like a marinade or a salt rub or something like that but you always want to season and salt uh, salt and pepper both sides because you're gonna flip the meat over in the pan when you cook it and you don't want it to be crispy and seared and delicious on one side and kind of bland and boring on the other side so you don't have to be too precise with the salt that's kind of also why I like the flakes because you can just kind of put it whatever wherever a little bit of pepper when you're seasoning you don't have to be super heavy with it. It just needs to be enough to really cover. So like this is what it looks like after. And you just kind of press it into and you can take it and kind of mop it up on the sides. Especially if you get a thick cut like a New York strip or a sirloin or something that's got like a big thick side to it. You can pick up some of that extra stuff flavor goes a long way and you want to kind of take advantage of everything you got okay so we got the meat all seasoned next bit bake the potatoes okay so I need a baking pan and aluminum foil you 
should really invest in a good set of pans. Um, the baking set that we got was actually a gift from Larry, uh, Larry's brother Ted and his wife Emily. Hmm? Everyone's asking, oh yeah, okay, I went over this a little bit earlier, but since you guys got on, we're making sirloin steak with blue cheese compound butter with green beans and roasted fingerling potatoes, and I'll bring this in for another look, so you guys can kind of see, it's a little dark, I'm sorry, my kitchen lighting is not the greatest, um, but it looks really good, I love their compound butters though, dude, they had, we just had like a pork, a bone-in pork chop with a maple butter the other day, oh my god, that's so good. But yeah, so you you want a really good uh, set of pans because you don't want them to like buckle up or rust easily or anything like that. So you want them to last you a good long while. Anything really. Same thing with cooking pans. You want them to last you a long time. Um. Okay. So combine the fingerling potatoes, rosemary, olive oil, salt, and a pinch of pepper on a prepared baking sheet. When they say prepared baking sheet, what they mean is baking sheet with uh, aluminum foil, and I use olive oil cooking spray, 100% olive oil cooking spray. Wow, the lighting is shit over here. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you. Meow, this stuff. Literally just get it from anywhere. Olive oil cooking spray is amazing for all the savory stuff, and I actually have one that's got coconut oil for anything I bake. So if I'm baking like a dessert, um, my brownies, everything gets coconut oil if it's a dessert. Because it just tastes better than olive oil, honestly. Um, prepared baking sheet. Okay, so fingerling potatoes. Thank you. I just took a shower. <laughs> and I just dyed my hair. So I have Larry modding the chat over there. So he's telling me when you guys are saying stuff. So keep saying nice things. Okay. So they... They have them, some upside down and some downside up, so don't really worry about how how they're facing. I like to put them all the same way, but honestly, it's up to you. Okay, so potatoes, rosemary. Okay, so the chopped rosemary from before, just kind of sprinkle it all over. Most of it is going to be end up on the pan. That's fucking fine. Just get it all on there. Okay. Olive oil. Okay. Where's my olive oil? Aha. Uh, for my olive oil, I put... Oh. For any of you guys who cook often enough that you need to buy your ingredients in bulk, Whole Foods has got you on olive oil. This is three quarts, so three liters of olive oil. I literally use olive oil every time I cook, and I was tired of buying those teeny little bitch bottles at the grocery store. So get yourself like a glass or a ceramic olive oil thing, because this helps regulate how much you pour so you don't pour too much. So. I'm gonna bring this over here. Don't go in the sink, please. Thank you. There goes my paper doll. Okay, so potatoes. And you just drizzle over the whole thing. Okay. And then salt and pepper. Seasoning early on is important because the more precisely you season in small batches early before you cook stuff the less salt and pepper you have to put on your dish after it's finished April says hi. hi april so i always even if they don't say salt and pepper sometimes i'll add like a little bit just like a couple pinches or so early on Okay, spread in a single layer, bake until golden brown, and fork tender. They have some interesting descriptions for stuff. 15 to 17 minutes, wall potatoes, bake, cook green beans. Okay, so we're going to put these in the oven. Oh, turn on the oven. 
light. Okay. All right, so what is next? Here. All right, cook the green beans. Oh good, I don't have to use a pot. Okay, so we are gonna go up and over to the stove. You guys can see the stove. Good, okay. Oh, I need a pan. So I'll show you guys my pan collection. My everything pan collection. We've got a couple, you can see we've got a couple red copper pans in various sizes. I literally live and die by the red copper pans. They are amazeballs. And Christy says hi. Hi Christy. See there's Larry modding my chat. Doing so well. <laughs> um, and I, I just got this lid rack. It's amazing. I'm all about wall organization because my apartment is kind of small. So we have to eke out every bit of space that we can. All right, so red copper pan, amazing. This one we just got again, so I'm super excited. Okay. Probably need all of these salt, pepper, olive oil. Just bring that with you everywhere you go in the kitchen to be safe. <laughs> um, and I learned this handy trick from having a metal microwave. You can also put it on the kitchen door with a magnet. Um, I have the recipe card stuck up here, like so, so I can always see what I'm doing and I don't have to run all over the place to find it. Okay, heat olive oil in a medium nonstick pan over medium high heat. For those of you who have numbers, your oven, medium high is like three quarters away. I trust you. Okay, so I'm going to give it... A minute or two to heat up, and you can just hover your hand over. If it's hot, you'll know. You're smart. Tim is asking where we got those pans. Hi, Kim. These, um, I think Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Yeah. Walmart, Bed Bath and Beyond, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely Bed Bath and Beyond for sure, and they have it in this and a bigger size. Um, but you can also find them on Amazon or the As Seen on TV. I'm sure has them because that's where they first came out. That's where I remember them from, but these are a lifesaver. Okay, so that's starting to get warm. Oh, it smells like rosemary in here. It's so good. That's my fingers. Cool. Okay, so. Okay, that's warm. So you can feel like the hot air kind of starting to go. You can turn it all the way up to high and then bring it back down to medium high if you want to like heat it up faster. But honestly, it's six of one half dozen the other. Okay. So you can kind of hear the residual oil and stuff that's on the thing below it. You can hear it kind of bubbling and crackling. So I'm going to go ahead and add just like a swirl. It always says two teaspoons of olive oil. Um, and you always like roll it around your pan. Try to cover the whole bottom. That way everything gets touched by the olive oil evenly. Okay. Add the green beans and a quarter cup of water. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to bring my board with me, because it's a nice big thick board. Got this board from uh, our friends Corey and Katie, who we used to live with, and bless them for leaving that with us, because this is legit my favorite cutting board ever. Okay, so I take the tip of the green bean, and I put it in the pan, and I can see it kind of bubbly. Oh, there we go. You can hear it kind of do that sizzle. So that's how I know that it's going to be hot enough. Okay, and I have like a little gadgets box of all kinds of crazy random tools and gadgets that I find around the kitchen because chefs are secretly lazy and will want to buy a gadget to do everything. So a quarter cup of water is the same as four tablespoons, in case anybody ever needs to know that. I didn't realize that and it came in handy. A 
we'll just wait for that to do what it's gonna do says cook until fragrant about 30 seconds since I have an electric stove it's probably gonna take a little longer than 30 seconds just because it cooks differently I do miss cooking on a gas stove but I mean stainless steel appliances so. okay and the garlic. Aha, half the garlic. Okay, I totally skipped a step. That's fine. So I'm just going to add this in around the outside where it's a little drier. There, you can hear that like really bubbly. You can smell the garlic for sure. Where's my spoon? Did dishes, so I've got stuff like all over the kitchen right now. So I'll get you guys in here a little bit. You can see what this looks like. So it is bubbling, it is on a medium high heat. And I love cooking stuff with a wooden spoon. So because then you don't risk uh, scratching up your pots. Because it really sucks when you, if you have like a metal um, spoon or something like that and you're trying to stir stuff and you end up putting this huge gash at the bottom of your pan that you can never get out again. So we're going to cook this. So the next bit, step up. Okay. So the next bit up here, this is the step that we're on right now. So we're going to cook it for two minutes and then we're going to add the grape tomatoes, which are there and cook for another two minutes and then salt and pepper and then we're going to put it on a plate. This will just be a whole lot of shots of me cooking. <laughs> thank you Carly and thank you for coming on. This is my first video so half the time I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about so I appreciate you guys asking questions to give me shit to talk about. So you got a little bit longer on the water. I'm just gonna let that sit and bubble off. Fucking love seltzer. And this stuff, my mom turned me on to this particular flavor. It says pamplemousse, which I don't actually know if that's a word and it might be, but I know it's supposed to mean grapefruit but I just call it pample mousse because it sounds amazing. I could, uh, except, do you want to put something on? I could, um, but I'm using my phone to record, so I don't know if I can play music at the same time. Um, so the dish again, for anybody who's joining now, this actually probably has way, oh yeah, way better lighting. So this is what we're cooking, sirloin steak, potatoes, green beans, and like a really delicious looking compound butter. Look at it. It's so good. And their presentation is amazing. Like, I try to get it as close as I can, but it never looks as good as the picture, but that's pretty much everything. Okay, so the green beans are cooked down. You see all, like, all the water is out now. It's just, like, kind of sparkling at the bottom. But I'm going to add in the tomatoes. Kind of get it evenly in the pan there. Cook these for two minutes and really if you have time and energy learn how to flip your pan it's really cool and it actually helps uh, toss the veggies so that they cook evenly so they're not just cooked on like one side and you get like char marks on one side and nothing on the other you can use a spoon but it's way easier if you just use the handle I 
And with something that's delicate like tomatoes, I like to keep it rotating frequently. Otherwise they get mushy. Okay, salt and pepper. Just like, literally, I use my whole hand, but you could just use like three fingers. But just like a teeny pinch of salt. It's fine. And pepper. Just enough to cover it. Like don't, if you like a lot of pepper, put a lot of pepper. Just, it's mostly to taste. So just practice doing different amounts. And when you find something you like, go with that. Pretty much 90% of cooking is, well, let's try this and see if that works. So it hasn't quite been two minutes, um, <clears throat> but I don't want the tomatoes to get really soggy and wrinkly. Um, and I'll show you what everything looks like in here. So this is what they look like, and I'll show you guys a, a flip shot. There we go. You gotta get it down to the back and then pop it back up. Yeah. So you can see the tomatoes are kind of breaking down a little bit. They're like a little squishy, and I don't want them to get too squishy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them. And I'm just gonna set these in like a bowl. Or you can actually, I'll get the plate. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on a plate. Use small plates. Like I really like using small dinner plates. These were also a gift um, for a, from our wedding registry actually. I fucking love these plates. They look so cool. They like stoneware because they're really durable. And they're blue. So, this is good. Ooh, it's hot. Okay. Alright, so these don't have to be arranged in any particular way. You just kind of stick it on the plate however it falls. And then I'm going to move these over here. Because I think we're going to do the steak. Oh, we're going to do the compound butter. Okay. I'm going to turn this off then just for a second. So we're going to make a compound butter in a small bowl. I don't know. I never know what they mean by small because like I have a lot of, a lot of bowls. Okay. Come on. Soften butter. And they send you like pats of butter, which is, I don't know who this butter brand is, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. I really like, I use uh, Kerrygold. Uh, Irish butter because it's creamy and amazing and it doesn't it's more flavor and less like straight fat I know butter is fat but like it just tastes better I know Finlandia is also really delicious you can find that at like Walmart so if you have the choice go with one of those two uh, remaining garlic just scrape it out half the green onions oh they just kind of mush them together okay never mind they did not separate them between the tips and the little meaty white parts. So that's fine. So half the green onions. Yeah. And a pinch of salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. And then mix any spoon. So this is what this looks like, right meow, okay I'm just gonna, there we go, right meow. So we've got the green onions and the salt and pepper and the butter and the garlic all in here. So I'm just gonna, there we go, so I'm just gonna mush this, try not to squish the green onions because then you just have green onion paste. And you kind of want to reserve some of that texture. It really helps to leave this out on the cutting board. So 
so that it softens because trying to wait for this to soften is going to take all day so you may as well do that like first thing okay so the next part oh and the blue cheese okay uh, we got the blue cheese in the baggie i'll put that in there too all of it i don't normally like blue cheese but i like steak so i'm willing to give it a try I like blue cheese in some stuff and other stuff not so much. It's weird. I have no excuse. That's another good thing about Home Chef and um, services like it is that it gives you a lot of choices for different types of recipes. So it gives you a chance to try new stuff that maybe you didn't like. I used to hate mushrooms, like with a fiery fuck passion, and now I actually get really excited to cook mushrooms. Okay, so now I have to mold this into two small discs. So these are going to sit on top of the steak when it's finished. So I'm going to first just kind of break it in half. There we go. I'm trying to get a good angle for you guys. All right, and then I'm just going to kind of squish gently and just kind of try to make a disc looking thing. Something that sort of resembled a disc in a past life. So there's one cute little disc. And I'm right next to a hot stove, so the butter's like trying to melt on me at the same time. Okay. Okay. So, have my towel always wear a towel don't forget your towel never leave home without it so I'm gonna put these into back into their little bowl here and then we stick them in the fridge so they are solidified and they don't get all mushy on us Friends on. Friends! okay what is next Ooh, steak time it's my favorite time Okay, so I'm going to take this back over to the other side. Take it on the other side. And bring over the steaks. So you want steaks to relax outside of the packaging for probably no, no less than 10 minutes before you cook them. If you cook them fresh out of the fridge, then it's you're going to be cooking tense meat because cold temperatures make it pull together, um, and that usually makes it like turn gray or uh, doesn't cook evenly. So you get a good sear on the outside and it looks nice and colored, right? But then you open it up and it's like raw on the inside. So you want to make sure that it's relaxed and sort of floppy when you're ready. Okay. So I'm waiting for this pan to heat back up again. Since it was recently pretty hot, it's not taking very long. And I'm just going to re-drizzle. Faux drizzle my nizzles. Okay, roll it around, get a nice good even coat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the steak that I did with the green beans to test to make sure it's hot. Yeah, that's the sound. Okay, so when you put steak in, you want to lay away from you. Don't, like, just drop it in. Ooh. Because then you get splashed in the face with oil. And I can't tell you how many scars and burns and crap I have on my arms from olive oil. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. So I'm not going to touch these. I'm going to let them sit exactly where they are for probably about like four minutes per side, four or five minutes per side. And that's going to get a nice good sear. So I'll show you what the step looks like, like here. So you want that kind of like brown color, a dark brown crispy color on it. So now what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that four minutes or so is I'm going to do which I know is the like most super exciting part of it, but um, doing dishes while you're cooking, clean while you cook. Clean while you cook. 
because it seriously takes forever to do dishes and literally the last thing you want to do when you're done cooking is to do the fucking dishes. So I just rinse, put every all the food down into the fucking garbage disposal, get all the shit out of your sink. We just did dishes so we have like a whole dishwasher full of clean dishes to put away, but I don't have that kind of time right now. So that will get done later. But you always want to rinse off your cutting boards, especially the meat one. A few spoon, soap, scrubby brush, because you don't want leftover meat juices contaminating your shit. Don't nobody want E. coli up in this bitch. Hot, hot, hot water. Like it's steaming up in here. You want super hot water. I'm all about a clean, clean kitchen. It also makes the food taste better. Woo! <laughs> I'm so smart. Wipe that down. Make sure you got all the soap off because when the meat is finished cooking, we're going to put it back on the here to rest before we serve it. Letting your meat rest is a big common thing in food land because if you cook meat that's not rested, then it gets all tense. And if you cut meat before it's had time to rest, when it's been cooked, then all the juice spreads out of it. And you get a messy board and less flavor in your meat. Always keep the flavor in your meat. So we're gonna go back over here to the steaks. Hasn't quite been four minutes yet, but I'll show you guys what we're working with. So you see, where are my tongs? Tongs, 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 tongs. Okay, so always have tongs. I always recommend grabbing meat with the tongs instead of your hands because A, it's hot, um, but it also gives you more control. And I'm just going to rub this around in all the oil at the bottom of the pan. I'm going to show you guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking this is so good. Okay. So I'm going to show you this is what it looks like right now. So I'm just rubbing it around in like all the oil at the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to turn it over and see this fucking sear. That's what it's supposed to look like. It looks so fucking good. And just kind of rub it a little bit on the bottom a little more. And then, yeah. You want it to be brown and kind of golden looking, but not black. Because that's when you know it's burnt. So I'm going to let that go for another couple minutes. These are kind of small sticks, so I don't know if four minutes is going to be too long or not. So I'm going to come over here. This is what our plates look like. Just kind of randomly veggied. Okay, so back around and hey guys. So we're waiting for steak. And I'm just kind of walking around my kitchen. I guess I'll kind of show you my kitchen. So I've got this is our fridge. This is all our spices. I love these because these are glass front and someday when I'm not being lazy, I'm going to actually do glass etching on the front of these for the spice name. Um, but that'll be another project for another day. Um, my knives, my beautiful, lovely knives. I love these. Um, they have a, they're all one piece, so they don't have like a separated handle or anything like that. So I really like these, but you want to have a good weight in the handle. These are kind of hollow, so they're really light, but I prefer that. Um, a lot of chefs prefer to have a really solid, heavy handle. Um, lots of metal tools, spices, this stuff. Let's check on these. I'm gonna turn this on the side. If it's if the steak has a thick side, don't be afraid to give that a good sear too. Game. Hi. Hello to AJ Sister Victoria. So much steam. Steam is good. Steam means you're getting color, and color equals flavor. So, alright, so I'm going to show you guys this trick. 
that I have for telling when steak is finished. So you take your hand like this, and this is the tightest you can go. So this, and what you're going to do, pardon me while I balance my phone. Perfect. Wait. Okay, you're on boob cam. Okay, so you go like this, and then you touch the meat of your thumb right here. And that's really, really tense. Okay? And then what you do is you go, this is for well done, medium, medium rare, and then rare. And as you go, and don't like squish them together, like just touch them, and the meat around your thumb gets softer and tighter as you go towards your pinky, softer as you go towards your index finger. So right now, I like medium rare, so I'm looking at something like that. So don't be afraid to touch it. It's got a little bit of a bounce, which is what I'm looking for. It's hot. Yes, it's hot. I know um, you can also use, if you know what it should look like, squishy by eye. So this has kind of squished in the middle, but I'm not pressing too hard. So I'm going to give that another 30 seconds to a minute. I'm going to let that sit on its fat side. For this sec. Get that inside. I like it pretty red in the middle, so but that's just me. All right, wow, I've got 16 people. I didn't even think y'all wanted to watch me. So this is so cool. Hi, guys. Haley, I see you. Hi. I'm just going back through and like looking at all the chats and stuff. You guys are so nice. And thank you for all the comments on my hair. I just like took a shower and re-dyed it, so. But now of course I'm getting all hot and sweaty in the kitchen. Okay, so I think we're about good on the steak. So turn that bitch off. And I'm gonna, oh, fuck you. Low battery, my ass. I'm gonna bring you guys back over here to the counter uh, or my keyboard. Sorry, guys. One of these days, I'm gonna get like a mount or a webcam or something good so that I don't have to keep bringing my phone places all the time. Okay. So I'm gonna take the meat out and set it on the meat cutting board. Keep it separate. And then don't, with the red copper pans, they're made well enough that you can put water in it pretty much right off the stove and it's not gonna crack or anything. But for a normal, not especially nonstick pan, leave the pan in the sink or off to the side or just back on the stove for, um, uh, for at least as long as it takes to cool down by itself before you wash it because if you put water on it even if it's hot it's gonna crack the nonstick coating we don't want that get on the potatoes and I'm realizing now I didn't set a timer on the potatoes <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of wing it and hope they turn out okay oh I hear you pop it okay you know what I'm just gonna there's about to be a lot of steam Okay, not as much steam as I would have thought. That's fine. Sandy! Hello, ladies. So we are coming to the ass end of our recipe. I'm going to give that a couple minutes. Good, solid couple minutes. Let it rest. Do not touch it. Don't touch it. Veggies are still a little warm, so good. <clears throat> 15 to 17 minutes. I wonder how long ago that was. <laughs> Did, uh, does it say how long I've been on the thing? It does not. Boo. Okay. Well, then we'll get to play this by eye. So let's go check on the potatoes, huh? I don't know that it's been 15 minutes, but who knows. Woo, that's warm. Okay, so you see the potatoes are a little brown on the top, but not quite. What I'm going to do is, where's my towels? I love tongs. Tongs are such a versatile kitchen instrument. So you just pull this out. I'm just gonna kinda 
shake these around a little, roll them in the oil a bit, and then I'm going to flip them. Because I like to get both sides cooked and crispy, not just one side, because I don't want it mushy on one side and crispy on the other. Okay, so I'm going to give that probably like five more minutes. Maybe, not even, just like a couple more minutes. The top's brown. Okay. Hey, Sandy. Yeah, Lauren, I'm going to give it a, a second to crisp on the top, and then I'm going to stick a fork in it and see how done they are. But they smell so good, guys. That rosemary in there is just really fucking delicious. I love spices. Um, we had... So we had a fish, Bruce, it was a little betta fish. Um, Carly got us one of these really cool uh, fish tanks that had like an herb garden on top. And it was like one of these self-sustaining systems. So like the fit, you feed the fish and the fish eats and then it poops and then it nutri, uh, I can't fucking ever remember that word. It, the nutrients there feeds the plants and then the plants filter the water. So it's like this whole big thing. But then uh, Bruce got stuck in the, what the fan or the filter or something like that and the air water pump and died a horrible sudden death so we don't have the herb garden anymore but i'm always i'm looking for like pinterest ideas and stuff for herb gardens to put out on the balcony so hopefully something will come of that because i love spices rosemary and thyme are my favorite but those are really heavy spices so i'm always trying to look for new like fresh herbs and stuff like that yeah, Kim, um, usually I'll post pictures and stuff of the recipes that I put up, um, but because technically I could post the recipe, but I don't want, uh, Home Chef apparently follows my Twitter feed rather closely, <laughs> to my surprise, um, and I don't want to get in trouble with them by posting their full recipes and stuff on I mean, yeah, I just showed you guys like a whole close-up. I probably should have done that, but um, I don't want to get in trouble with them by sharing the exact recipes for stuff that they have to charge a subscription for, but I'm still going to walk through all the recipes and stuff, and if you send me your email, Kim, I can hook you up with some free meals so you can try it out if you want, um, and if you do the subscription, they actually give you access to other recipes from the past as well, so you can go on the app and like pull out all those older recipes and save them and do stuff like that. Um, okay, so we're gonna check on the potatoes again. See them bitches get. Okay, yeah. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, so you can see it got kind of golden on the top. A little crispy. Okay, so these are done. Grab my oven stuff. And please be fucking careful, guys. Like, if you try doing cooking stuff, don't burn yourself. Don't fucking stab yourself or cut your hands or whatever. Like, just be safe, y'all. Yeah, Lauren, aquaponics. That's exactly what I was talking about with the herb garden stuff. Okay, right, so we are back over here. Come back. The, there we go. Technology, man. Okay, so get these potatoes down. All right, so from the picture, they've got the potatoes on one side, the veggies behind, and then the steak right in front. So I'm going to put the potatoes down next. I'm going to put the meat down last so it has as long as fucking possible to... Where the fuck are my tongs? Turn off the oven. Don't forget to turn off your oven. I consistently forget to turn off the oven. And I only remember because it's like, wow, it's so fucking warm in here wonder why okay so when it comes to putting shit like this on a plate I just seriously don't fucking worry about how it looks worry more about how it tastes than how it looks um, if you're confident in the taste then you can start futzing with presentation but my presentation honestly these meals are really super simplistic so you could put them together with your eyes closed and they would still look good, to be fair. But I still have to make pretty pictures for you guys later, so, you know. Gotta, girls gotta have standards. 
That one just fell exactly into place, so I'm just going to leave it exactly where it is. And I will tell you, I'm not going to lie, whenever I do presentation, um, there's always one that turns out amazing. And sometimes it depends on what the cut of meat looks like, like what shape it's in, and one that turns out like just kind of matte. Like they taste the same. There's the same amount of food on both plates, but they, uh, one always better than the other one and so I always end up taking the better looking one and taking a picture of it and then giving Larry the other one yes JT hi and yeah thank you I'm glad you're able to uh, vouch for it here so I'm using a chef's knife which is like the biggest knife in the block to cut meat you want honestly you probably want to use something more like this which is long and thin, it's got like a really pointy end, but um, I don't wanna have to wash another knife. So um, always sharpen frequently. That's also something that people don't really talk about a whole lot. They don't tell you how often to sharpen your knives. I sharpen it like several times, like almost every time I use it. I keep mine like super duper duper sharp. You don't have to, really, you should sharpen it at the beginning of every time you cook, but I've just gotten in the habit of sharpening it, like, when I cook it, rinse it, wipe it down, sharpen it, like, just to keep it top notch. Okay, so I'm going to bring the meat over so you guys can watch me slice it, and we'll see how the fuck this turned out. Oh, that cooled down pretty quick. Cool. Fantastic. Okay, so you can see when I bring this over. Woo! That was a close call. So also... If you want to do this that I'm doing here with the cutting boards, get cutting boards that are significantly larger than your sink. That way you can put it over and just like knock shit right into there. And also if you have a small apartment, it saves you a lot of space. A lot of counter space. The counter space is very precious. So I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. That's better. Lighting is still kind of shitty. Oh, God damn it. Lighting is still kind of shitty, but we'll fix that down the road. Okay, so you see on here there's like not very much juice at all running out, which means that they've rested pretty good. Yep, they're still kind of bouncy, so that's good. All right, so moment of truth. See what happens. I always hold it with God, yeah! Fuck yeah, look at that. All right, I got to show this to you guys. Always nervous. Okay, so this, this is like right, a happy medium right between the medium rare end of medium and a good middle of medium rare. So you want like pink, squishy kind of in the middle, mostly brown on the outside, and then that crisp sear on the, on the outside. Yeah, JT, definitely want to uh, make knives are sharp because if you ha try to cut something with a dull knife, you're going to shred whatever it is that you're cutting and probably a few things you didn't mean to cut the meat the veggies your finger the cutting board like just make sure your knives are sharp and don't worry about going super fast when you're cutting stuff just do it right the first time and take your time and then as you get more comfortable with it you'll learn to go a little bit faster for the sake of speed but to be totally fair unless you're working in like a professional kitchen speed really doesn't fucking matter like at all all right, so when you're plating sliced meat, I grab it with the tongs and I lift it up onto my knife so it all kind of stays together. And this will be an interesting little maneuver with the camera. Okay, so then I grab it and I slide it back on. They have it uh, pictured with the steak whole and then the butter sitting on top but I always slice my steaks because it saves me a step when I'm eating. So mostly because I'm lazy <laughs> and I save myself a lot of trouble down the road. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and slice the other one. This one feels a little less bouncy, so this one might be a little closer to a medium, but we'll see. Okay, yeah, so that's kind of pink in the middle, so I would give this probably a medium cook and since Larry heathen that he is pref prefers his steak to be cooked medium instead of medium rare this will be his cut 
but you can still like it's so soft still even if it's even though it's pink and there isn't any like darker pink in the middle for that medium rare cut it is so tender right now it's gonna taste so fucking good guys i'm super excited okay so squish it together kind of give it back its original shape and then back onto the plate and you can use your knife to help you do presentation too i like spread mine out so you can kind of see the inside of it a little kind of fan it out make it look all purdy and then this is something i literally always do if you get yourself a cutting board with a groove around the outside and then you have like the juices and stuff from your steak as long as your steak was cooked like correctly i just pour the juices like right onto the steak like that if your steak is undercooked or if there's blood on here from where the steak was resting previously before you cooked it, that's bad. That's why you always want to cook your cutting boards or clean your cutting boards in between because you don't want raw uh, cooked meat to be sitting on a place where raw meat was. Bad, bad juju. Okay, so that is that one. So now we're going to get the butter and set it on top. Everything down. I'm not trying to have this bitch slip all over the place. So, mo butter, mo better. Oh yeah, that's nice and cold. Okay, so this has been sitting in the fridge since the very beginning. Little, and they're like pretty firm now, so they should probably pop off with relative ease. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Okay, so these little cakes or the butter, that, the compound butter that we made. So you can just stick that like right on top. It looks a little funny with it sliced like that, but I don't give a fuck, it's gonna taste awesome. So, all right, I think that's it. Hey guys, we did it, hooray. So I'll show you what it looks like at the end. And then we're gonna eat it. And then I'm gonna eat the fuck out of the steak. I'm not gonna leave this on live while I do that though, sorry guys. So, all right, so this is what it looks like. And I don't know how to do a fucking, wait a second. Ah, screenshot. Okay, fantastic. All right. Yeah, so this is what this looks like. Oh, Angie, hey, boo. I know you do Home Chef, too. If you haven't made this one yet, do it like ASAP. Um, yeah, Lauren, I love my steak medium rare to more of the rare side. Larry doesn't know what he's talking about. He likes yeah. his medium. <laughs> But yes, this looks so amazing. Oh, and then we have the green onions here. Just to kind of garnish a little on the potatoes. Put a lot on, put a little on. Fuck it. Life is short. Just use them. I like using ingredients, so if you've got them, fucking use them. Whatever. Okay. So you got a lot of color on the plate. You got reds, greens, browns, yellows, all the good stuff. All right. That was that. Oh, and I also I did the apron thing. It looks kind of jacked up, but I'll get it down at one point. Um, so I'm going to go eat the fuck out of this steak. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And uh, if you guys have ideas for recipes that you want to see me do down the road, let me know. Um, for the time being, I'm just going to be doing the home chef stuff because I've got like a whole fucking binder of recipes right here that I've collected over the years. So I've got really good stuff and we get Home Chef every single week. So every week we'll be doing new stuff. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for dropping in and I will see you later. Paul Chef out.